What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and I am here today with the review for Marriage and Medicine Season 7, Episode 10, Battle Down South is the name of the title. Y'all, I'm so tired. That Real Housewives of Atlanta video just took a whole fucking lot out of me. But we're going to get through this video. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. All right, so let's start the episode up with Toya and uh, Eugene. So Toya and Eugene are having a dinner date with the kids. And wait a minute, where was Michael? So it was uh, it was Eugene, Toya, their boys, uh, Miles, Simone, and Cecil, but no Michael. Where the hell was Michael? Okay. Now here's my thing with Toya. You know, she talking about how she don't, you know, you know, you know, you know, stumbling over my words, how you just don't go to a room when you have a house like that. You just don't go to rooms to go to get some furniture. Well, girl, your house is echoing like a motherfucker and we can hear it like there's nothing for your voices to bounce off of because it's what it's empty. It's empty. So, girl, get some furniture in your house. Talking about some custom furniture. Um, Toya. You don't want to be in trouble with the IRS again, do you? So live what live what within your means, my dear. Don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Live within your means. So, yeah, get custom furniture, girl. Get some custom furniture that probably costs about five hundred dollars. Cause again, you don't want to do what? Live above your means. Because who was watching? Uncle Sam. What will Uncle Sam do? come after you for that IRS money. So, keep that in mind, Toya. Mental note, Toya. Mental note. Let's talk about Toya real quick. Because I was watching um, Watch What Happens Live because Andy had all had all the Bravo liberties. What the fuck was that ugly ass shit that she had on looked like a pink tablecloth. And I'm gonna come. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna channel back to that pink in just a minute, cause I just thought about something. I'm gonna channel right back to that pink in a hot second. So you know, they give the house tour. Beautiful house, absolutely gorgeous. I don't know why she's still calling that, that closet two stories. I still don't know why she's calling it. I guess. I guess it's a two story closet. I guess I'm gonna let Toya have it, but it's technically well. It's two stories. Let her let let let's let Toya live. So then Simono screaming ass tell them that they are planning a couple trip to Cabo this year. And I'm like, okay. As long as you don't scream, Simone, like that'd be my problem with Simone when they go on these goddamn trips. She just be screaming like a fucking banshee. Like shit. I could not deal with Simone in that loud ass screaming. So they say all the ladies are invited, including Quad. And guess who has a problem with that? You guess right. Toya and Eugene have a problem with it. I'm like, why do y'all have an issue with this? Y'all invited her last year. Oh my God. You guys invited her last year. So now a year later, you guys have an issue with it. First of all, you guys know how this works. Production is not going to let you guys go on a cash trip and not invite her because they're paying for it. You guys are not paying for it. Let's move on, because that was stupid to me. I'm moving on. All right, so Dr. Jackie. So we saw Dr. Jackie. I guess she had just got off of work. And she called Quad, joking with her about coming to get some food for she and Curtis. And then she starts talking about how she, you know, she was so proud of um, Quad's um, book release party. And then she talks about her um, book what is it called? Something about something the V, all about the V or something like that. I, I I didn't get the name of the book. I'm sorry, you guys. It is almost 1:30 in the morning. I'm hella fucking tired. Um, so you know she's talking about how she wants to do her book launch and she wants for um the girls to wear something that is vagina pink. And Quad said something that I was like, girl, you should have kept your mouth closed just a little bit. Like you should have just. Mm -hmm. That's what you should have did, because she says, "Oh, my vagina is not um, my vagina is not pink. 
She says, then what color is it? She says, it's brown. Dr. Jackie said, that is the labia. I'm like, yeah, quite your vagina is pink. If you ever just take your hands down near and spread it open, it's pink on the inside. It's very pink. I don't know how pink it is, but it's pink. Vaginas are pink on the inside. Trust me, I know this. I know vaginas are pink. Um, so then we see the party. All the ladies are there, and everybody's dressed up in pink. Mariah looked like she was in a hot pink. Toya, yes, Toya, what the fuck did you have on? That didn't have an ounce of pink in it. I don't believe. Like, what is it with us black people? Like, why, when somebody tells us what a color scheme is for a party, why can't we ever follow a dress code? Is it that hard to follow a dress code? Now, yes, if it's all white, I will have a problem with that. I'm like, oh, I don't wear white because I'm a messy person. So if you have food that can get on my clothes, it is more than likely going to happen. But I'll wear white just letting you know it might not be white by the end of the night. It might be, you know, white mixed with um, cocktail sauce, white mixed with ketchup, white mixed with barbecue sauce. It might be a mixture of something else. Hell, it might be a mixture of white mixed with red wine, white mixed with beer. It might be white mixed with something else. But it'll be white. It'll just be mixed with something else by the end of the night. So then we see Heavenly. You know, she's telling the girls that she set quiet up on two dates. And I'm like, huh, you're, so, you're proud of those two dates that you set her up on? Okay, what of them? So then Jackie gets up and, you know, she's talking about the book. And she has Monetta Shaw there, you know, I guess as the, um, the MC or something like that. I don't know. And, uh, you know, Jackie was telling her story about having breast cancer and how she was not able to have kids. And she says, Buffy, you know something about that too because you're infertile. I'm like, no. Why would you tell a group of people that I know a lot of those people in there she didn't know. And even if she didn't know them, how do you know she wanted somebody to know she was infertile? That was insensitive, Jackie. And I'm, I typically am here for Jackie, but I think that was, that was insensitive as shit. And then I'm like, oh, shit. All you managed to do was put a battery pack in Mariah's fucking back. And she did. All she did was just put that battery pack right there on her back and just turn that bitch. And Mariah went off. I'm like, oh, shit. God. Why? It's going to come back up again. So then Simone tells everybody about the couple strip. And Toya was like, it's not a couple strip. Toya, shut up. Please. No one asked for your input. God, she gets... Oh, God, she got on my nerves. And then Mariah said, but, you know, last year you had a whole issue with quiet coming. So what changed now? Production changed her mind. Production told her, if you guys are going on a trip, you're taking quad right along with y'all asses. Yes, you might be single, single Melly, but you're taking single Smelly Melly with y'all. So get the fuck over it. And Simone was like, shit, I guess I got to get over because shit, I ain't paying for this shit. I ain't paying for them. I ain't paying for me and these other helpers and they men. So let me shut my mouth and call me motherfucking Sue. Oh, God, these people got on my nerves. All right, now let's talk about Dr. Contessa. So we see Dr. Contessa and Dr. Scott. So they go to therapy and thank God it's not Dr. Sherry or Dr. Jeff. We got a whole new doctor. I'm like, yay, new doctor. Hopefully you're worth it. Hopefully you're nothing like Dr. Sherry and Dr. Jeff. Like for the longest time, I was like, I, are, are, is Dr. Sherry and Dr. Jeff the only two doctors down there in Atlanta that people can go and see for reality TV? Because that's all you would ever see is Dr. Jeff and Dr. fucking Sherry. And neither one of them are good for shit. Who do you guys think is better? Dr. Jeff or Dr. Sherry? You know what? Dr. Jeff gets the drama started, though. I will say that about Dr. Jeff. He gets the drama started. Jocelyn and Stevie J and Mimi and the Real Housewives of Atlanta when um, they did that whole sit-down when Nene did not want to hear anything that Claudia was having to say. Oh, God, speaking of Claudia, 
people are trying to get her on the Real Housewives of Dallas. I, I, I'm not here for it. I am just not here for it at all. By no means. But, Contessa, so when she and Dr. Scott got there, she told him, like, hey, you know, turn your phone off. So they go in, and not long after, I don't know how long they were sitting there. They could have been sitting there for a minute. But his phone rang. Because I know Cynthia said at um, the panel yesterday at BravoCon that sometimes they be sending, you know, th those scenes that we see them sitting down at, they could be sitting there for two hours, but, you know, you only get a five-minute footage. So, you know, it's on, uh, so, you know, he takes a phone call and Contessa talks about how she feels. So then he does come back and the doctor's like, so do you want to tell him how you feel? She says, yes. She says she doesn't feel like she's important enough to him. She doesn't feel like when it comes to the hierarchy, she feels like she's at the bottom of the totem pole. And my thing with Contessa, I think Contessa is struggling with something. I don't know what it is. It's something I think, you know, I kind of wonder if it's like a midlife crisis for Contessa. I don't even know how old Contessa is. But it just feels like she's, it's like a, it's like a voice she might be trying to fill. I don't know. I can't say what it is, but it just feels like she's, she's either trying to fill a void or she's overcompensating for something. But, you know, she, hopefully she gets it together. But let's move on. And then lastly, Cabo. So the couples, they make it to Cabo. I think they're staying in a resort. I'm not positive. I know that um, Simone told them that, you know, there are there is a, um, a presidential, there's a penthouse, and they have to do a dance-off to get the penthouse. So only three couples participated in the dance-off. That was Buffy and Dr. David, uh, Dr. Scott and Dr. Contessa, and Dr. Damon and Dr. Heavily. Lurch said that, nope, he didn't want to do it with uh, Dr. Jackie. Uh, Mariah knew she wasn't winning with her no dancing ass husband, uh, Aiden. And Toya and Eugene said, nope, we're good too. And Quad ain't got nobody to dance with but herself. So, the couple that ended up winning was Heavenly and Damon. I'm like, wait a minute. How did they win? And I think the reason why they won is because Damon tried to do a handstand. I'm like, yeah, you're gonna, you gonna break your fucking neck. Because that looks like granite marble. And it looks like concrete on top of that. So if you split your, if you just, ooh, yeah, if he had a, if he had a, mm, he would have fucked himself up. But you guys, that was Marriage and Medicine. So uh, be sure to like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification button, and share the video. And I will see you guys later.